Hi, what's up? We're in the next part. Please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings. I'm busy telling a story here about what's going on in the male and the female community. In the previous part, I was telling you a story about my ex-boyfriend and how it is that my heart got broken yet again when he basically uh, suggested that if at all I was I was pregnant once when I had this pregnancy scare because I got sick and I was very vomity. And because I was vomit vomiting, I thought I was pregnant. And when I told him that, um, what if I'm pregnant? He basically suggested that, you know, abortion, that would be the way to go. And it broke my heart because there was... Uh, a, a woman that came before me that passed him up that he that had a kid with another guy he's best friend I told you that story blah 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 etc and she was prepared to basically be he was prepared to be the dad of this woman's child because he loved her that much and yet here it is that he was telling me who would have been his biological carrying mom that he's the the, the, uh, the woman who would have been carrying his biological child telling me that if at all I was pregnant that I should like have an abortion right yeah okay so my ex it, appar it appeared was still very much in love with this woman and here it is that he was going to a party where she was going to be at to a point where I wanted to get out of my pajamas wear some clothes and go even though I was very sick of course that didn't happen he went home uh so guys I felt like I was being settled for like I was a placeholder do you understand that if this other woman made a decision that look I'm happy to be with you no matter what that my ex would have just like literally left me in the rain and gone to be with her nonetheless that was another thing that happened so because um later as time progressed his brother's sickness became like a whole thing and because of his brother's sickness he started to find more solace with his friends than with me it's like uh, because of the fact that his boys knew his brother the people pretty much that he came up with me say about the brother he was able to find more comfort with them than with me so i felt very shut out very left out and among the people that knew his brother from childhood pretty much was this woman right like she, like she was among the females growing up with them got in the same community i was just an outsider um and an outsider that apparently had taken a man away from them all because he was now spending all of his time with me my uh ex then somebody passed away right um what the the, the, the this girl now this woman that passed away passed away before mm -mm, yeah no it was in the run-up to his brother's was it in the run-up to or did was his brother already late no his brother had already passed away at this stage right his brother had already passed away and i was there for him throughout it all of course right and what have you but my ex at this stage remember i told you that he could hold his liquor he started to drink in a way that was very like tactless and he was starting to slur when he was drunk and not be able to walk straight like he's drunk like he just used to he would drink to a stupor to a stupor and i set out a lot of my ex's rubbish during this season because like i said he lost his brother so you don't kick a dog when he's down and i imagine that he was mourning um even though nekerata ulao complain and whatnot i still stuck by him and i imagine that this is going to pass if this is a lifetime relationship is on lula because his pain is going to get less and less over time so I, I set it out um but one thing that i could not take in my stride i could i could take my ex drinking like a dog and being irresponsible when we're out and basically making a fool out of himself but all the other behavior goodness gracious whoa that that was like on another level okay one time like shortly after his brother passed away and i know that his brother at the stage ha had died because he was no longer the main sort of kind of topic of discussion in terms of sorrow in everybody's life but it was now this new thing there's a woman that i met very early in our relationship pretty much like maybe in month one or two um that used to work for like a radio station or whatever she was young and vibrant and she had everything and she was dating this other dude in the entertainment industry blah 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 whatever and things did not work out they kind of fell apart and because of that she killed herself what uh anyway so i knew this woman i had met her we had had a conversation and laughed at a party one time so my ex like i said i was there for him with his brother's funeral and everything at that stage his boys that he was always hanging out with now starting to uh, neglect me for them i told you things fell apart really quickly with my ex and i within the first six months things fell apart it, like my honeymoon phase no, with, like my honeymoon phase with him lasted like six months after which things started to fall apart all right he was already starting to pass me shade he was already starting to not want to spend time with me he was already not taking my calls sometimes he was already just weird but he every time i'd be like okay you don't want to be together whatever fine let's break up he would then be like no but baby i love you so i just like i didn't know what in the world to do i thought that maybe he was just mourning and so whatever we'll we'll write this one out my boyfriend went on right ahead right this woman that died i had at this at up until that point i had a, a gang there hadn't really been many deaths in fact that was the first was it the first it, that was the first funeral that i uh the first death that basically there had not been yes i'd been to funerals with my 
ex over the years of people that passed away in the circle of friends because yeah the youth do die sometimes um but i think that was the first one and again because it was the first one that was not in his family right for me it was like guy what are you saying what are you saying about who i am to you if you don't want me to go with you this one of the, these the, some woman committed suicide right because over some guy like something foolish of that nature she committed suicide and uh everybody now was basically not only going to but the funeral and then the after tears and what have you because my boyfriend's friends were already busy being like does Garabo really have to be everywhere does she really have to be everywhere he literally shut me out of the funeral of a person that we both knew but that knew him more he introduced he's the one that introduced me to her i was like i thought i was the kind of girlfriend that you take to weddings and funerals heck dude i've met your family i've met your sister your late brother i have met even your brother in prison for crying out loud i have met your mom your dad your aunts your uncles your i know even where one of your family members that live outside of johannesburg live because we've traveled there with your family and i spent the whole day in another province with your family that's how well i that's how much of a girlfriend i am unless your family members are so immoral so as to accommodate some other woman as your main and yet they also are happy to basically embrace me that you would ever go to such important events as funerals and weddings funerals and weddings my boy friend shut me out of the Khutsirisa. that would be the comforting week when you go to the family of this girl no he did not shut me out of that no 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 because i remember after just like on the day or two uh, a day or two after this girl passed away my cousin right that i met my boyfriend through and my cousin's boyfriend and my boyfriend we went to go and see Lisa at this girl's house during the week and I expected that my boyfriend would then travel with us as well on the funeral basically invite us say guys let's go to the funeral together of this girl because this girl had also been to my cousin's apartment when we were busy driving it up a storm and we were all happy to go and support my boyfriend who was the only one out of all of us that really knew this well well girl this girl well right we were basically trying to support him and he shut all of us out he shut my cousin's boyfriend out who was his boy he shut my cousin out me so that he could rather be with what i came to conclude was this woman this woman this other woman the, this jezebel lady that was the bane of my sister i told you that after that day when my boyfriend told her about the durban july i was comforted because he basically dissed her telling i'm not going to be buying you fascinator hats and i got comforted but then things that started to happen thereafter on that day that woman declared war with me and the things that started to happen thereafter made me realize that my boyfriend would do anything to spend time with this woman with me not being there in so far as they amidst each other as a conglomerate of people that grew up together they were on the come up together so he shut me my cousin my cousin's boyfriend out okay and it really broke my heart my cousin did not read too much into it because i remember she telling me that Karabo, maybe he just wants to you know have you know experience this time with these friends because they all knew him together and you might also feel kind of like a sore thumb and stick out and i sort of kind of listened to my cousin and took it in my stride and swallowed it but i was still hurt because something told me that the reason why my boyfriend doesn't want me to go to the funeral of this woman that committed suicide was because that other lady was going to be there and also because his, his boys his boys had been giving him pressure about the fact that does Karabo have to be everywhere she's always with you now what in the world so he went to funeral having literally been like wait he didn't tell me in so many words that i don't want you coming with me but you know when you tell somebody that you and you alone are going to funeral it's like he said it this way to me let's say her name was fifi the girl that killed herself he was like i'm going to funeral yeah fifi i'll be back to see you later at 5 p.m yeah so basically he was saying i'm going alone he didn't say i don't want you coming with me he just made the call and was like i'm going to funeral yeah fifi le siswe um i'll i'll come see you later afterwards after the whole thing he suggested it he dropped it in a hint that i'm you're not coming with he basically told me you're not coming with and i was so heartbroken because for me it was like why wouldn't you want me to go with you why wouldn't you want me to go with you to the funeral of one of your friends is this really like what's going on that's when i started to sense pick up gauge that maybe his friends are influencing him away from me and also he will do anything to spend 
spend time with this random female yes that's where uh no she that that woman the this odd woman right that that was giving that was wreaking havoc in my life i didn't even get to meet her on the brother's funeral at the brother's funeral because remember i told you she was a flight attendant so she couldn't be there she couldn't be there i'd never got to meet this woman until like a couple of years down the line and when i saw her i was like this is what you gave me a whole bunch of grief over i met her sister first even before i met her and i'm gonna get to that story okay just a little bit later like yeah at some point i'm going to have to like probably take a bath and then come back to finish the story yeah okay so my boyfriend went to that funeral that that's when things started to act, look really funny for me. Really funny. It's like he was icing me out. And it really, really broke my heart. And at the same time, he was constantly hanging out with this one um friend of his that does not live very far from me right like i I've, at the time when i was dating him he, in this particular season they give you like in this very complex but my mom had another unit number like just n not far from here we moved out and then she came back to this complex because she liked it okay yeah uh this dude used to live not in the same not in the same neighborhood but like little falls tubans valley mm. Unadula around this guy and uh it was one of my boys my, my my boyfriend's friends this friend of my boyfriend you know when they say a man is cunning conniving it, it, like sh just deceptive he was so sweet yo this guy was so sweet he was kind he never passed shade gave attitude nothing yes it's just a nice warm guy on a smile and for me i could i thought he liked me i thought that he was just such a cool guy and i never under heaven would have ever accused him of any wrongdoing if it did not become clear that him and his conglomerate of friends in that particular hub of life uh, are definitely responsible for whatever's going on with my boyfriend. It was clear that it was him because of how much time my boyfriend was spending with him around the same time that everything fell apart. But to me, he was so cool. He was so kind. I would have trusted him with my life this guy the way that he was such good peoples but it later got revealed to me by the lord once i got saved that he was instrumental in breaking my ex-boyfriend and i up he was instrumental in that not only in the physical things that he said and did but spiritually he broke us up and god told me that the reason why his boy broke my ex and i up was because he was in love with me i told you he lived in my neighborhood and after meeting me through my ex Apparently what was always ringing in his mind was, why didn't I meet her first? Why didn't I happen upon her at the spa buying break? Or just Jay, like how does this woman live in my neighborhood and she ends up dating my boy living all the way in the south of Johannesburg? How does this even happen? And apparently this guy was literally among the most instrumental forces that shattered my relationship with my ex both in a physical capacity as well as a spiritual one because when physical weapons did not work he turned to witchcraft and he also ended up being among the most um what do you call this he also ended up being among the most guilty of what ultimately happened with my ex wishing that he could basically reverse things because at the end of the day my ex is his friend not was but is his friend still right to this day and he loved him but like i told you men compete gabasadi and they low-key covet envy desire long for virtuous females and when one of their boys has one they will break them up act like they ain't a thing and influence these men unto jezebels only for them to later regret everything that has happened because they hated when their boys are suffering they hated when their friends are suffering but they brought their suffering along anyway this guy right alongside other of my ex's friends but he was among the most instrumental him and his like circle of rando influ influences he was busy he was very very busy like he was a sweet dude and for as sweet as he was i for the life of me couldn't understand why he could not keep a girl or no not even so much to keep a, it's not like these women were dumping him these women were not dumping him they wanted to be with him they wanted to stay with him but he kept leaving them he just could not stay with one woman for a longer than a certain amount of time yeah that was this guy in and out were women coming out of his life i should have known from that that this is somebody that i just need to be very ori of like yeah i need to be wary of him but i can't tell my my boyfriend i don't want you hanging out with this person or that person but i just need to be you know like yeah i should have known but anyway whatever he was very sweet and so i sort of kind of let my guard down around this guy had no idea that he was holding some personal feelings like why in the world did he let himself fall for his boy's girl like i just i don't get it but then again my ex 
had such a wild transformation after coming together with me that that was observable by all of his friends that he likely probably was like she's a good girl she's got all of these stats and on top of that look at how improved Nanti's life is ever since this this chick came into his life what would I give for a woman so stable so sober but he was in and out of a whole bunch of women uh, some of which I just felt like Mona you can rest guy like come on relax but he just they kept, kept coming in and out it's like he there was just a lack of satisfaction in his life concerning women I don't know what was going on there but I think with this guy more than anything it was a generational curse because his dad was like that he had multiple sons and daughters and like just a whole bunch of kids across all of south africa his father so i guess you know guys unless you give your life to jesus christ you will inevitably be inevitably become your father's son or your father's daughter your mother's son or your mother's daughter you will inevitably commit the mistakes of your parents so this guy was just bound to end up just like his dad baby daddy of a whole bunch of children across multiple baby mamas with no stability all the way into your old age and out of all the women you married you never even married the one that you actually loved like you just keep messing up this dude was already on a highway to hell because of his uh, generational curses he had brothers all over and sisters south africa anyway whatever uh, his dad was a bit of a jacob zuma Alrighty, uh cool beans and bananas so this guy could not for the life of him um just accept that my 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 boyfriend had found mercy he had found love he had found a good woman he was gonna shatter that and like i said he ended up being among the most guilty so this guy is the one that my boyfriend went to the funeral of this um him and the conglomerate of friends he he went to the funeral of this female with of this girl that committed suicide with this guy and i remember just thinking well what name did i give him see let's say his name was Cizwe. uh the Cizwe guy i was like Cizwe lives in my neighborhood dude couldn't you and Cizwe just pick me up i didn't tell my boyfriend that but i was thinking it when he told me he went to the funeral with Cizwe, i was like Cizwe lives in my hood so close that y'all could actually jog to my house so couldn't you first pick me up in the morning and then drive to the funeral why well Cizwe was among the men that kept on telling my boy do you have to keep bringing Gabo I mean dude like stretch your legs a little man you need to relax plus she doesn't really understand much of what you're going through because she just she's new in your life we get your pain we get your yo guys Yazi evil evil just like yeah anyway uh whatever it broke my heart to find out that Cizwe is the one that that drove that went with my ex to the funeral I moved on but nothing ever improved from that day I believe my ex-boyfriend would give anything at all to hang out with this woman right insofar as he can get an opportunity to be alone with her he would do it and he wanted his boys to see him cheating on me with her or flirting with her doing whatever Unabata wants her his friends that he's not whipped and he can let loose with any other woman so he often left me out of things just so he could display to his friends that he's not altogether taken and in the process shattered me in the process broke me remember i told you guys that me and him we never used to use protection um you know doing the dirty or whatever one time i told him that uh i went for for an hiv t this was yeah the, we were yet still to move in together i had started to pick up that he was acting funny he was no longer the same all this happened guys like six seven months into relationship like it's still so early still so early we should be in honeymoon phase we should be in my honeymoon phase at this stage his, his 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 brother had already passed away he had started to pass me shade we had stopped spending as much time together like weekends he uh, during the week we were always talking but as soon as come friday saturday sunday basically Basically, the way that his boys were, he was like that with me. He started to not give me all his time, but some of his time. He started to give me the weeks. But on the weekends, he would ice me out. I would not be able to reach him, contact him, talk to him. Because he did not have his own apartment, neither did I. We used to book into hotels, but it stopped being every weekend. He would just go zombified on me all weekend and I would get so mad. So mad. Yo, guys, I would get so mad. He would switch off his phone. Yo, I would get angry and I would, like, there was a time when this man was scared to lose me. And whenever I threatened to dump him, he would, like, basically jump up and down. Remember I told you the first time I threatened to dump him, that whole drug story, he basically cried all up in my grill. This time around he was basically daring me to do it because he started to trust that i'm not going anywhere he saw how in love with him i was and how much i was just taking everything in my stride and he started to act such a violent fool and then when we were together um partying it up a storm he would drink so much that i he was just barely recognizable he was just barely 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 recognizable so because i started to notice funny strange behavior on his part and also i started to notice that he was hanging out a lot at seasways even during the week 
to a point where he was even going to work from there sometimes and yet he wasn't even coming to see me i lived in the same neighborhood at Cizwe. Cizwe could have driven him to my place because he didn't have his own car like i said and just helped him my own check i just helped him my own check and uh and yet it, it didn't happen i was like but you spent the whole week go ha Cizwe. why didn't you just come and hang out with me for an hour and then you know go back to Cizwe? dude you're in my hood and again i was like Cizwe is sweet he wouldn't have been un 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 unprepared to you know just like uh, basically help like i go drive your checker immediately he wouldn't have given you grief but it turns out that Cizwe was passing him shade i the Cizwe's apartment where he used to stay right was just this house in it let's like uh, lots of young people activity like upuza drinking partying yeah in and out people used to hang out there uh so sometimes even during the week there'd be a little mild party going on at Cizwe's house guys you know when i find things out I find them out when I found things out man did I found find them out um I started to suspect that he was cheating on me right because he was acting a total fool and I had no way of figuring out that's when I, I, I basically walked away from him his mom called me and he's he, she then told me my son is not into women he's not a womanizer he's not a player so Karabo, your, your suspicions are unfounded right that was what the mom was telling me but I was like I know what I sniff and what in the sky what I can tell like I can tell right anyway I he you know when you are too in love with the person to break up you're not ready how so be ready to am more this thing you want it to work you want the old thing to come back anyway whatever i decided to trick him into basically confessing that he cheated on me um and i told you guys that we never used to use protection sexually right so one day i i i basically said to him i asked him i was like are you cheating on me i remember we were on the phone and i was at the office i should have waited until night time to basically break down on the floor and cry i asked him in the office there on the phone i'm like nonti um are you cheating on me dude are you cheating on me mind you the whole seasway incident was not the only one that made me suspect he was cheating this, this was the second time that i was suspicious of cheating because there was a time when he spent an entire weekend and he didn't call me back and he was with that guy that i told you had the medi that who's side piece was working in my office he spent the whole weekend there and i was like what in the world i know that guy and if you are gonna basically switch off your phone on me with that guy maybe you also had a side piece maybe the two of y'all had that night and you had your side pieces at his apartment at you know at the expense of me and that uh, that guy's main chick maybe anyway whatever i had that suspicion already long ago and i asked him like maybe two or three weeks prior to that date i was like oh, did you cheat on me that weekend did you sleep with some other woman and i tried to drag him drag it out of him i told you my ex couldn't lie to me but this time around he was not about to just flat out admit that he cheated so he was just uncomfortable and that disquiet me knowing how he is when he's speaking the truth and when he's trying to be deceitful made me basically trick him into confessing because i needed to know i'm not out here in these streets protecting myself with this guy and i thought he was proper on the street and narrow with me because you know even his mom is out in these streets telling me that he's not the cheating type and she was right but his boys made him the cheating type like when a man is with a woman that guys could not care less about they won't influence him negatively concerning this woman but when they are with the kind of woman that in and of themselves they cover to be with they will make him cheat yes it's just so destructive the devil anyway i decided to basically trick my boyfriend into confessing and and I'm chilling at work, goes too long, rotating on it, go calls in thing, in between calls, in between, like in a break or whatever. And I'm like, dude, are you cheating on me? Like, Nonti, are you cheating on me? Just confess and let me know if you're cheating on me. And he was like, no, babe, I told you I'm not cheating on you. What's wrong with you? I would never do that. I was like, wow, I took an HIV test. Guys, <laughs> his response, his response. I was like, well, I took an HIV test. Instead of being like, so what? Of course it's negative. You know, you and I both, we have taken tests. We are both negative. When we started dating, that's what we did. So what? King, you took an HIV test. So what? Instead, you know what his response was? And? <laughs> Yo, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Sizanibo. Tusan can nakupa ling teng medzin koski kolobedi zwemokin non tonto. Hebana. Eh, this guy responded by asking me and basically he was like, what was the result? I was like, I took an HIV test. And he was like, and <laughs> He was trying to find out if I was positive and he gave me the disease. Why would he do that? If he had not slept with a woman, never mind slept with someone else, but also did it unprotected. Yazi, that answer. I was at work. I was burning. I was sweating. I was like 
<laughs> yes, you guys, yes. I was like, why under heaven would you ask me what the result of my HIV test is if you didn't cheat on me? At which point he realized I had tricked him into confessing. And then he was like, baby, I told you I didn't cheat. Like, I have not cheated on you. I was like, then why under heaven were you uncertain of your, of your HIV status? In which case, guys, I hung up the phone. I panicked. I freaked out. I panted. Paced the floor. Um, I, yes, I was in so much pain. I remember that day I got in trouble. I got a first written war, a final written warning in the office. Because I had confirmed that my ex cheated on me. Okay. And I basically stopped taking calls. I let them reroute. They would come through and instead of answering them, I would let them reroute. My boss checked my activity on the monitor and he saw that I was doing this. And he called me into his office and was like, God, I would come in. He was so mad at me. He was like, what in the world are you doing? Basically just told me off and then gave me a final written warning on the spot saying that if I make yet another mistake, I'm fired. Yo, guys, I almost lost my job because I was devastated because my ex-boyfriend, I had just found out that the man that I love, like life itself, like it's the breath in my lungs, had slept with another woman. For me, it was just the imaginations. Like I could not stop. Like throughout, after finding out, guys, first of all, I, after, uh, at the end of the working day, I called him again. And I probed and probed before I even left the office. Like, literally, it's like, what, 5 p.m. And he, in and of himself, is knocking off. And I was like, did you cheat on me? Did you cheat? Did you cheat? cheat? He refused to confess. He refused to confess, right? At that stage. Fine, we got off the phone. I still had no proof. But I, I felt like I had sucked it out of him. The next thing for me now was to get an HIV test for real. Like, for real. It was to go and get an HIV test for real. And indeed, I did go and get one like maybe the following day where, where did i go to the dog i went to mary cross and uh i i went there literally just purely for the sake of getting an hiv test and the doctor gave me the results on the phone and that's how i knew that uh it was negative right i was still negative but for me it was like hey maybe i'm inside the window period uh so don't get excited just yet i ultimately took another one a couple of like weeks down the line from that date basically i was negative but the fact that he slept with another woman without protection for me it was like what the heck like what in the world this is what we do like it's you are gonna give me a because i'm young like what in the world you're not gonna go and ruin my life like that so because i just could not get these thoughts out of my mind ultimately one time my sister had like a bride at her apartment like some little get together my boyfriend came with i was still holding on for dear life to this thing i for the life of me could not let go i could not let go i could not let go this is gonna be the final part right now i'm gonna go and uh take a bath and then i'll come back and finish these stories okay yeah what no i couldn't let go i couldn't let go for me it was like i need proof i need evidence i need this guy to come out i could not rest i could not rest and at that get together at my sister's house at that get together at my sister's house right at that very get together at my sister's house okay no i'm wondering what in the world is going on hey hey what's going on there anyway whatever let me just finish this part at that get together at my sister's apartment i was a killjoy i was just flat I, I, I couldn't be fun and exciting for anybody that was memad there basically couldn't stand me because i was just i was moody and mean uh because i was hurting and my boyfriend was there and in and of himself naive means because whoa like ugh, we should have just stayed home type thing and i'm like no we're gonna do i took him to the balcony of my sister's apartment and i was like did you cheat on me again i tricked them into confessing just like that other time with the drugs where i told him i just want the truth so i can have peace i've already taken an hiv test and it turned out negative so i'm not sick and you are likely unsick too but all i want to know at this point is if you did it because the truth is going to give me closure i'm going to be able to move on and i'm i promise i'm not going to dump you i told him i promise i'm not going to leave you i just want the truth and also just to guarantee that you're not going to do it again and he just he melted he, he took it he melted he melted and he was like yeah i did he confessed to me just go okay he confessed to me right he was like yes I did. And instead of immediately panicking and throwing my toys off the cot, I wanted information. I wanted to know how many times he did it because I suspected already another time before and also the second time. And I could connect what I imagined to be his cheating to two separate occasions in two separate friends' apartments. I wanted to know if he had done it more than once. So I kept my cool. And I was like, I basically asked him the questions, right? On some, 
I get what did I give that guy's name Caesar, right? I was like, was it at Caesar's apartment? I just asked him, was it at Caesar's apartment? Uh, where, with who? What was her, you know? Yeah, and indeed he confessed to the Caesar's apartment cheating. He's like, he basically was like, I was I was drunk and like I was not thinking straight, and there was this girl that you know I told you that Caesar's Caesar's apartment was this like random place where parties would just happen all the time. He was like, there was just a girl there, and she is the one that seduced me. She was flirting a whole bunch with me and I kept on telling her I have a girlfriend and she was like she doesn't care. She told me that she was not looking for a relationship just a good time for the night and she thought I was cute. And so like Yazzie guys as he's busy telling me these things Yazzie yo oh, my heart like it sank into my stomach and then got digested and like properly regrew in my chest and beat hard until it bled and oh ah goodness gracious Yazzie I just listened to him explain how it is that he cheated on me and I, I knew Caesar's apartment and I just imagined him basically like for me it was you probably it was a duplex you were downstairs when you met this girl rarely anybody goes up upstairs the bathroom is downstairs everything is downstairs need for the guests so to finally end up having sex you would have to literally stand up off those couches or those dining room chairs downstairs go up the stairs actually open Caesar's bedroom window and go and do it there I doubt it was in the car or even right there in front of everybody you were given space and time and Caesar with his boys and everybody they watched you go upstairs and basically cheat on the woman that all of them imagined you never could do anything wrong too it's like they hit a bullseye that night it's like that night Caesar finally got my boyfriend to do what needed to be done to basically shake up my relationship and ransack it i just imagined these friends of his watching him do what he would never fathom to do a guy that loved his girlfriend so much that he was always with her until his boys pressurized him into leaving her out of events and parties and gatherings and then he meets some woman that is a loose cannon happy to do one night stands and he ends up going upstairs with her literally just robing and having sex with her without even asking guys does anybody have a condom as he, all these things i just imagined them and it was only once he confessed to me that i basically lost my mind at my sister's apartment i lost my mind i, I lost my mind i lost my mind guys like i just i lost my mind all right i lost my mind and we were argumentative the whole time to a point of my sister getting really irritated with me because it was one of those Lonnie Santon apartments that everybody was like shh at and I was like whatever y'all like we got I gotta go anyway we had that night booked into a hotel and we were I was not about to lose money we were not about to lose money from booking because we'd already paid we went there and continued to not only fight but I continued to probe and probe but because of how angry I was he refused to confess to the second one he refused to confess to the second one and he was just now listening to me argue all night he, he stopped talking he stopped talking and he was just listening to me cry and complain and imagine and imagine and when I was basically saying you probably did it too at let's say the other guys' house was Zama you probably did it at Zama's place too that other time when you wouldn't answer the phone all weekend that probably happened too he just kept quiet the whole night because he realized that la I he's not gonna get anyway bomb and it's gonna go off if he dares argue footy e hotel we're not gonna go and cause a scene go town lodge so he just kept quiet and I sobbed and cried like the whole entire night I could not stop imagining him with these women I could not stop imagining him like everything that he did to me him doing it to them and what's worse is that I could not imagine him going into them without protection despite putting my life in danger I did not recover for like guys I think it took me about four months to basically bounce back and despite it taking about four months to bounce oh I said I wouldn't dump him I I, I didn't I didn't like I, I don't even know why I didn't leave him I was not ready I wasn't ready I wasn't I, I just you know when you are not ready to like yeah he did not not only did he confess that one right refused to confess to the other because of how much I was busy crying and complaining he made a decision to go right back to reverting to denying everything too so I got a confession 
confession and a retraction of a confession. And just like still to this day, I'm not sure if he confessed only because I pulled it out of him and he just wanted peace or if he actually did it. But one thing that is certain is that when I told him I, I, I took an HIV test and he was like, and I knew from there that not only was this guy cheating on me, but he's also doing it without a condom. Also do it. Yeah, no. So I like I didn't break up with him, but it, it caused such a rift between us. That was already there. And all of my crying got to a point where it stopped even being too effective on him, but it started to like irritate him. But so I was no longer the apple of this guy's eye. But for whatever reason, every time I threatened to leave, he would just like beg me to stay. And I was like, hey, Lena, what is this rubbish? That is what men can do in their boys' lives when these boys of theirs have got good girls. And that is what women are prepared to do when a man is in love with a woman. They are happy to function as a seed sown of discord. Just so there no women out here in these streets can be happily loved by a man. Let me go and take a shower. When I come back, I'm probably going to be very shiny on the face because of all of my moisturizers. We'll finish this story then. Bye.